So not too long ago, I did a review on the Acer Nitro newer version. I forget what model it is. I'll post a link somewhere around here on the old YouTube so you guys can watch that video if you're interested. And I spent about seven hundred, about seven hundred dollars on that laptop, and there were a lot of things I didn't like about it. Poorly made, things you had to do to make it more cooling efficient. You know, two fifty six M dot two, which okay, but not big enough. And then you had the other issue of the fact that it just it ran really hot and you paid a lot and there was just not a lot of things I liked about it. I think it had the old i5 10th gen 1650. For 700 bucks, not okay. Well, long story short, the guy packed that one up after playing with it for about two weeks and shipped her back to the old Amazon. Yeah, I was done with that one. So then I got this one. And this one was $100 more and I think it has better bang for the buck. And so far what I can say is it seems like it does. So what do we got? So we got the HP 16A0032DX and it cost me about $800 and this was probably about two, three weeks ago. Comes with i5-10300, 16 inch screen, 8 gigs of DDR4, 512 gigs of a 512 gig solid state drive, 32 gigs of Optane memory, and this one is paired with a 1660 Ti. Now our 1660 Ti boasts that whole Max-Q design, which pretty much is Max-Q just says that the graphics card is just a lower version of the actual 1660 Ti. Just down clocked a little slower and everything just to kind of help with the cooling efficiency. That's the best way I could say it. It does have 8 gigs of DDR4 memory, which one thing I don't like about these laptops is that they typically don't come with dual channels. So you have to add a little more memory to get that dual channel. And that dual channel does make a decent difference. Now it does come with an HP TrueVision HD camera with integrated dual array digital microphones, which is great if you got to do that whole web-based thing or online learning, or pretty much you want to do some light streaming on it. And I think with the hardware combination, you should be able to stream some decent gaming performance on it. Now our i5 10300H, that was launched back in 2020, has the 14 nanometer processor, four cores, eight threads, base clocks of 2.5 gigahertz and boast up to 4.5 gigahertz. Our screen, 16.1 inch full HD WLED screen, 144 hertz IPS anti-glare micro edge, 300 nits, 72% NTSS and is 1920 by 1080p. So decent 1080p screen. And I will say using it, it actually does, look, does a pretty good job and looks really good when you're gaming. Now our input, HDMI, USB 3, got your ethernet and your USB type C also got your microphone input and your SD reader on the other side you got your power connector that goes into the side over here which I don't know I haven't decided if I'm a huge fan of that I typically like it when they plug in through the back but I guess I'll get used to it and another USB right over here now power brick it's a 200 watt power brick and it actually ain't too bad looking I kind of like this uh, sleek unique design better than those square ones that you typically see or some big bulky one all right so now that we went over the specs let's talk about what we're going to do with this laptop so first thing first any laptop or any hardware we get in this garage can we make it better and can we hopefully not break it so those are two good things to keep in mind of first thing we're going to do is that eight gig of single channel memory definitely not good we need to definitely fix that and give it a little more um, so we're going to add another stick of memory, 8 gig DDR4, this is 3200 variant. Second thing I want to do is I want to change the thermal paste on it. And here's why. I have found with laptops, whether new or old, mostly the old ones, but even so the new ones, just changing it to some better quality thermal paste does make a difference. Yes, it might yield anywhere from 2 to 4, uh, 2 to 4 degree difference. But that might be huge, and that might be something enough just to kind of get rid of some of these reds that are going on over here. So I'm running the whole heaven benchmark, and yes, this is more GPU intensive, but considering that the CPU and GPU typically are very close knits and have a nice close relationship together, I want to bring down these temps. So I've had spikes up to 100 degrees Celsius, which, guys, this is a laptop. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast, and I'm sure we could put some cooling underneath it that would help it, but... I want to see a little better thermal paste might help dissipate that better. And like I said, I have found that better quality thermal paste does help. So we're going to do that. And let's look at some of our baseline temperatures. So right now our CPU is at 75 degrees, 73. It has spiked up to 100 degrees. And what it'll do is it'll down clock itself. So our clocks right now, its max is supposed to be 4.5, but we're sitting at 3.5 3 gigahertz. 
So yeah, we might get some performance there. Of course, the fans are screaming at me. And our GPU temp is at 72 degrees Celsius. So even if we were to get a couple of degrees down, it might balance itself out. It might just give us a little more performance. So let's go ahead, let's switch angles. Let's open this thing up and let's see what we can do. And also see what it looks like when you open it up. All right, so these laptops have that plastic top and my little um, workspace over here is a little aggressive and I have found that it leaves a little scratches on it. So I got a nice towel over here and that'll kind of help protect my laptop. I kind of like this laptop, even though she's running a little toasty right now, but I still kind of like her. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna open this up. This thing has like 1,427 screws. So we're gonna go ahead and get all these screws out, then use our little guitar pick. I don't know what the correct word for it is. One of these little pick prior thingamabobby 4000s, prior open, and then we'll see what the inside looks like. Now the top has these long screws over here, so we're gonna put these separate over here. Usually I use a magnetic tray, but I don't know what I did with mine. Hopefully I didn't leave it in a computer. I have done weird stuff like that. These in the bottom are smaller and use a smaller bit. Using our pry tool, pry it up. Nice and gentle. Bingo, there we go. All right, and I gotta say, I'm kind of broken hearted on this one because it appears this laptop has dual channel four gigs. Great. My Acer Nitro actually had one eight gig stick. This has two four gigs, so um, that might not work as good. It is what it is. All right, but let's go ahead and let's focus on the more pressing matter. Let's take off this cooling solution and let's see what the thermal paste looks like. As you can see, we have two big heat pipes, one for the GPU die, one for the CPU. We got one, two, three, four, five, six screws just for the fan. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. And over here, we have four for the heat pipes and it's numbered. So let's start with one. Actually, that's probably for the assembly. When you start installing it, you go ahead and you tighten it to that sequence. Got four over here. All right, all my screws are released. So now, guys, I can't stress this enough. If you're gonna take apart these heatsinks for these laptops, make sure you don't prime them too hard. That little thermal paste thing gets a little sticky on there and that creates some issues. I have actually bent these and when you bent them, good luck getting them straight again. And if you don't get them straight, you ain't gonna get good contact on the dies and yeah, you have to replace that. Not a good thing. So just kind of Pry nice and easily. I actually pulled this off already. So just pry and little by little. Don't go too crazy. Man, this thing got a little piece of tape over here. Let's see if we can pull this tape off. Or let's do that. There we go. That might be a lot more beneficial for us. Alright, not too bad. So we got that. Our thermal paste is dry as a bone. So our thermal paste is junk. And if we look at the heat sink over here, you can actually see I can actually peel this off. Yeah, that's definitely no bueno. So we need to clean that up, get that fixed. On a positive note, I actually went through some of my uh, junk pile, the stuff that I probably should get rid of, but forget what I have. Glad I keep stuff, and I was actually able to find an 8 gig of 3200. So I have two 8 gig sticks of 3200 memory, which is awesome. Even though they're different brands, they're still 3200 speeds, and they should work fine. We'll see. The thermal pads, when they came off, they did not get damaged because uh, I actually had the Acer one where I took them off. They got a little damage, but they were they were fine. They were fine. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna clean this up. We're gonna use our thermal paste, which our flavor of the day is the old thermal grizzly. Usually I use the Arctic MX4, but I ran out, but I still have this one. And I actually like this. I use this one a lot too, and I get good results with it. So let's clean this up and let's see, put it together and we'll see what, how we do.
All right, so we popped out our two four gigs of memory. Now we got our two eight gigs. I know Mitch match, but they're still the same speed, so they should work fine. Eventually, we'll get some that match and look a lot better. So overall, we're pretty much done. This was actually pretty easy, not too bad to do. Um, underneath here is our 32 gig of that Intel Optane memory. We're just gonna leave it, I mean, it's fine for now. The 512 is enough for the games that I typically wanna play and for the work I do. And I also use an external, so that's fine. In the future, I'd probably look to uh, changing this to like a one terabyte M.2, get some better performance on that. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put the case back on. Let's um, check thermals. And also see how this thing holds up with a few games. So I'm going to put this back together and we'll segue into the next part. All right. She booted up nicely. I didn't break nothing. So that's always a good thing. So I'm running the Heaven Benchmark Test Bench again. And she's still running a little toasty. But I will say maybe we got a couple of uh, degrees difference. I'll review the footage and I'll post around here uh, the before and afters. But what can I, I, what I can say that I noticed that I can remember is before we were pegging out at 99 plus and the highest is 97 so it may be a two to four degree difference like i said but every little bit helps and these type of tests over here they really put a stress on it my gpu was sitting in the 70s and we're looking about 68 so like i said two to four degrees difference i believe if i'm not mistaken this was hovering more in the mid 70s i'm in the mid 60s so that worked out pretty good and of course with our 16 gigs of ram i'm sure that's going to help Give us a little more performance let's go ahead let's load up some games let's see how this thing performs at 1080p and we'll wrap this up All right, so let's wrap this up real quick. The gaming performance on this thing, pretty decent, considering that we only have a 1660 Ti, which is more ideal for the 1080p performance. But guys, it was actually very good, and we were able to maintain 60 frames per second. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p high, 60 frames per second. Cyberpunk, 1080p, medium frames, uh, excuse me, medium settings, 60 frames per second, our limit, the GPU. I mean, 1660 Ti is a good graphics card, and considering that this is the Max Q, it does perform very well. And we'll talk about the Max Q in just a second. Fortnite 1080p ha uh, high settings, averaging 80 frames per second. And so with this combination, we're able to get 60 frames per second on our laptop. And what I like about these laptops is that it's gotten to the point where, yes, you're not going to get the same performance as your main desktop rig, but you're able to on the go kind of continue where you left off if you're playing that game and, you know, you're in a hotel or somewhere and you just want to see what that next level is or that next item or grind a little more or play with your friends and you're still able to get an enjoyable gaming experience with it now as far as that max q we're going to talk about that real quick so max q graphics cards they're meant to optimize efficiency and cooling so you can run heavy graphic workloads gaming on a laptop without having like this huge four inch base with these massive massive heat pipes just to help cool and tame it so what they do is the max q graphics cards they're able to fit in a thin laptops due to nvidia optimizing them for peak efficiency so rather than ramping up the clock speed, voltages, and memory bus to deliver the best performance, they're actually tuned to deliver the best performance possible in a given thermal envelope. So whatever the size is, that's how they're tuned. Pretty interesting, if you ask my opinion about that. And also, it, they claim to boast that by doing this, you're going to get the best acoustic aspect or environment of these laptops. And honestly, guys... The fans are still pretty loud, so I don't know how well that works. But it does peg the question, is a 1660 Ti really equivalent to a 6060 Ti? Or are you paying for the name 1660 Ti and getting 60, 1660 or maybe even 1650 performance? I don't know. Definitely comment down below and let me know your thoughts on that one. So overall, I do like this laptop. The thermal pace, like I said, was negligible in the fact that 2 to 4 degrees, but those 2 to 4 degrees might give you that extra frame per second that you might need to get you your better gaming experience. Upgrading the memory, 16 gigs, that's the way to go. So definitely comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. 
when you guys game i mean do you buy gaming laptops do you buy just laptops just so you could just sit on your lap and just drink the old coffee and sip them up and all that good stuff or do you really go out at all out and buy just big laptops i mean me personally i just want a middle a middle for it i want something that I could just sit enjoy quietly play a game every now and then get my feet wet but something that's not going to break break the bank eight hundred dollars is a pretty decent price but like i talked about the price has gone up significantly they're sitting at 919 on the old amazon as of now and a little higher on the best buy i think about 989 or 969 can't recall if you like this video guys definitely hit the like button subscribe if you're not and as always we'll see what we come up with next